Hello, everybody. Today we're with Father Mark Hodges, who is a mission priest in Bullhead, Arizona. Now, Father Mark, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Oh, doing fantastic, Father. It's wonderful to talk to you today. So, Father, give us a little bit of background about uh, Father Mark and also about uh, your mission there in Bullhead City, Arizona. Well, I'm a convert to Holy Orthodoxy. I'm so grateful to God. I was a Baptist minister for uh, a while and uh, graduated from an evangelical, uh, a rather highly esteemed evangelical seminary near Chicago. Uh, but uh, was on a journey and it took me about seven and a half years of searching and reading and so forth and friends helped along the way orthodox friends but nevertheless came to uh, the firm conviction that uh, the orthodox church is the one holy catholic and apostolic church and uh, joined the uh, what, what was called then the aeom the antiochian evangelical orthodox mission under uh, father gordon walker in franklin tennessee and uh, I've been given various assignments, but uh, probably the most uh, significant was uh, 20 years uh, in establishing St. Stephen's Orthodox Church in Lima, Ohio, which is uh, doing great and going strong, uh, even still under a new pastor, Father Joshua Kuhlman. Having transferred to uh, Rocor, I'm uh, assigned to Bullhead City. And I discovered that there are such fervent, loving people there that my heart is drawn to uh, help them as best I can and uh, do all I can to assist in their, uh, their growth and their maturity. Um, they came from a, a, a Protestant, I would say, uh, background, a charismatic background called Calvary Chapel of Praise. And you may or may not have heard of that. Most Christians have heard of some of the music that came from Calvary Chapel of Praise. In the 70s, it blossomed at the, at the forefront of what was called Jesus music. But in any case, um, wonderful people, uh, Jesus-loving people, um, caring people. And uh, the assistant pastor uh, was on a search of his own. And he is, we call him CJ. His uh, baptismal name is Patrick, but he... Um, he eventually came to the Orthodox Church and led a slew of other folks to the Orthodox Church. So these are fervent converts, and they need uh, instruction in Orthodox, the Orthodox faith, and orth they were catechized. They're instructed in the Orthodox faith, but, but uh, they need instruction in basic Orthodox ways of life. But the thing about them is they have a cohesiveness that has sustained them for years, literally, on their own. They, several of them were traveling all the way to Las Vegas, which is a two hour drive approximately, just uh, for uh, baptism and Holy Communion. Uh, and <clears throat> they were gathering together, they got their own storefront two, two years or more ago, two, three years. And they have been gathering together ever since uh, on a faithful, regular basis uh, to pray. And Father John Peck has overseen them and visited them or made sure they were cared for uh, Eucharistically once a month. So these folks have tenaciously uh, grown uh, while wow. having no priest. I mean, that's, that's quite a feat. Uh, and so uh, I have the uh, awesome assignment of... Uh, helping them on their next step they have a storefront we want to find property we want to either build or uh get into a building of our own and uh i personally i want to get to know the people better we, we've scheduled some house blessings we've had a house blessing we're scheduling more things like that but we're getting to know one another and we're uh delving into uh practical orthodox rubrics and and things and you know uh, when to make the sign of the cross and so forth, um, uh, entering into the fasts and and so forth. So, um, a lot of a lot of activities going on. A lot of teaching is going on. Oh, praise God! Sounds wonderful. And if I saw from the pictures, uh, the parishioners actually did their own iconostasis, right? Yes. Um, uh, C.J., whom, whose uh, baptismal name is Patrick, he 
built the Akanasas, but the people have garnered together to beautify God's house. Uh, it's wonderful. It's, it's just a one room storefront. The room isn't even that large. <clears throat> Excuse me, but it's, um, but they have worked very hard to make it as beautiful as possible. And so when you walk in, you know immediately it is a house of prayer. And the uh, icons of the of 18 major feasts are all up on the sides of the, of the uh, walls. And it's just a beautiful, welcoming space to uh, worship God. Oh, glory to God. So you're, tell me a little bit about Bullhead City, Arizona, uh, the actual community that, that these folks are coming out of. What's, what's the place like? Well, Bullhead City, Arizona uh, blossomed uh, from the creation of a casino city called Laughlin, Nevada. We are right across the Colorado River from Laughlin, Nevada. Um, Bullhead City is right at the trifocal point where Nevada corners down and California uh, comes in and then Arizona meets the, the other two states. And Laughlin is a mecca for uh, casinos and entertainment and so forth. And so a lot of Bullhead City residents uh, work uh, across the uh, river in Laughlin. But Bullhead City has grown since it was founded uh, into a blossoming city, um, a small city. I think the statistics are less than 50,000. I'm not sure about that. Uh, I knew at one time, but um, uh, it is the hub center of the economic activity of the Mojave County uh, area. And there's also another city you may have heard of called Kingman, sort of a sister city. And that's closer to where I am stationed right now across, across the mountains, about 50 minutes away from Bullhead City. So as you can imagine, going in and back and in and back to Bullhead City up the mountains in the desert, um, with the gas prices as high as they are, we really appreciate very, very much. I mean, I, I'm spending four to five hundred dollars a month on gas alone. Uh, we very much appreciate Share the Face uh, help in that regard. Oh, fantastic! Uh, is your so, Father? You have a family, correct? I do. My wife and I, my wife Donna and I, have eight children, and mm -hmm. all, all of them are adults. Uh, all of them are married, except for. Um, our young, our youngest, Micah, is an adopted uh, autistic child. He's now uh, 23. He'll be 24 in November, and uh, he is in a group home. He is severely autistic and uh, is non-communicative, and um, he can he can very easily become violent and agitated. And so uh, we visit him uh, there in the group home, but uh, mm -hmm. all the rest are. Uh, adults and on their own. Oh, fantastic. So you're the only Orthodox presence there. You, you described a, an area there uh, at the We're top the of only Arizona. Orthodox presence within a two hour radius or at least an hour and a half. Um, uh, Las Vegas is good hour and 45 minutes. And then to get to the church in Las Vegas, you can count on a two hour drive. So we're the only Orthodox presence in the, in the area. And, um, they had no one. And so I'm grateful to God that Archbishop Kirill um, listened to Father John Peck. And Father John Peck says, listen, Bullhead City needs someone. They need someone right now. So I said, okay. Oh, fantastic. So looking then, you have a background in evangelicalism. And evangelicalism is, is very widespread in the United States. So as a, as a mission priest or as a missionary, someone out in the world, uh, what is appealing about orthodoxy to, the, to those with an evangelical background? Who are sincere Christians in Bullhead City. Bullhead City is seeking for the truth. And there's a sense in which uh, anyone outside the one holy Catholic and apostolic church uh, is not home yet. They're not sealed. They're not... Um, uh, they are seeking truth. They're seeking answers. Uh, as a Baptist pastor, and uh, I am very grateful for my Baptist background. My dad was a Baptist pastor. 
But my dad would say, you know, we all have the same Bible until we open it. It's kind of a make it up as you go along uh, uh, approach. And that's not their fault. It's not their fault. Um, it's our fault for not being open and reaching out and, uh, and his historically consigning the West to Satan, et cetera, and uh, not having uh, any love or care for our neighbor. But so it is our fault, our Orthodox fault, as uh, Metropolitan Philip used to say, uh, it, is the, it is the fault of us who have the apostolic faith that others are floundering around without it. But uh, they're looking for truth in their inner hearts. And so when you speak with someone, I was just talking with an inquirer uh, we met for lunch, his name is William, you know, and he had, he had his own questions, you know, but at the core of them, he was looking for answers. He was looking for the truth. He was looking for the church. He was looking for home. And, um, and we had a very good time. He's, he's coming to church regularly now. But in any case, um, they're looking for truth, first of all. Second of all, I believe very much in bridge building. Uh, I'll give you an example. Father John Peck, this, I just love this example. Father John Peck was the first one to create Orthodox radio. He was the first one to create Incarnation Radio on, on the uh, internet. He uh, is the first of many things, and he's won uh, many awards as web, webmaster of various journey to Orthodoxy and various things. But So he is unafraid to reach into new technology, new ways, any way he possibly can to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ, with the truth of the Orthodox faith. Um, so, for instance, <laughs> he was serving a wonderful parish, Assumption Parish in uh, Canton, Ohio. He, just, he himself is of Scottish background. He discovered that there were a lot of people planted in Canton, Ohio, uh, who had never heard of the Orthodox Church that were of Scottish background. And so he organized and publicized a blessing of the kilts. <laughs> 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 and, yeah yeah and it's funny and okay we all we all laugh and so forth but nevertheless he had 200 men in kilts at the orthodox church who had never heard of orthodoxy this was their first introduction to anything about icons anything about uh the holy trinity and any of our or ancient teachings he was he was showing them something they'd never seen before so he had 200 men there and he had a blessing of the kills. Now this is someone who is unafraid to do anything to reach, uh, reach the lost, um, unafraid to make mistakes, unafraid to, uh, and I, I like to believe that I'm like that as well. Um, after a, been a, being in Bullhead City and after a preaching for a while, they're already start talking about organizing and promoting a blessing of the bikes because there's many motorcyclists. In fact, uh, one of our leaders is a motorcyclist himself, and there's a couple others that are motorcyclists. Um, so they're very interested in reaching out in any avenue that they can. We want to uh, reach out to evangelicals. We want to reach out to Catholics who are disaffected because of some of the controversies going on in the, in the Catholic Church. We want to reach out to uh, the non-church folks with uh, the love of Christ. Amazing. Sounds fantastic, Father. So uh, let's go ahead and if we could, let's go ahead and start to start to wrap up. So you mentioned the gas and you mentioned that you're having to stay. Uh, <laughs> I assume you've got some accommodations that are not in Bullhead City. So you, you've got a lot of travel expenses and other expenses there. Uh, so um, let's talk a little, about, a little bit about support. So Share the Faith is, is helping now with your ministry. But if we could continue uh, to increase that level of help, which is very much dependent on our on our donors, what could we see as as you continue to progress? If you had more resources to work with, Father. Um, well, Saint Brendan's, uh, which is our name, Saint Brendan the Voyager uh, Orthodox Church in uh, Bullhead City, but Saint Brendan's is growing. We we uh, you will be able to see with greater help. Uh, more activity, uh, more growth. Uh, we are looking for land, and our uh, treasurer is already is also a realtor, and she is looking at uh, 
plots of land. Land is very, very expensive. Um, we are we are obviously of very limited uh, resources. There's about oh a little more than 20 people who belong to uh, St. Brandon's. That includes all the children. So uh, we are we are relatively young. We have um, one, two, three, four, five seniors. Uh, adults and uh, oh maybe um, five six young children uh, three teenagers uh, 18 year olds and so forth and the rest are um, young adults and so we're we are well balanced but we're a thriving energetic youthful community and uh, we will be growing and we will be looking for our own land we'll be looking for a building or or to build ourselves. And so we are looking for that next giant step. <laughs> one small step for man, one giant leap for uh, uh, St. Brendan kind. In my <laughs> so that does remind me, I do have one more question, Father. St. Saint, sure. Saint Brendan the Voyager. Now that is an interesting name for an Orthodox church. That struck me immediately when I saw that. So how did that saint's name get attached to this mission? Well, to be honest with you, I don't know for certain, but I can speculate. Uh, Father John Peck is the one who, uh, under Archbishop Kirill, Father John Peck is the one who founded the mission. And its leader, I've mentioned already, the one who built the Iconostas and the one who garnered all the people from from uh, Calvary Chapel Place and from elsewhere. They're not all from Calvary Chapel Place. But anyway, um, his name is CJ, CJ Kelly. Uh, he is of an Irish background and he took the patron mm -hmm. saint of Patrick. And unfortunately, we Orthodox are woefully ignorant of many of the Western saints, the pre schism Western saints. And Ireland, I'm told, uh, and we had a visit from Bishop, uh, uh, the Bishop, Bishop James, the auxiliary Bishop came to visit us and he gave us, he gave us an earful about the Irish saints. Amazing. The fortitude and the, uh, the strength and the orthodoxy of these Irish monastics who planted monasteries and planted churches, not only throughout Ireland, but uh, throughout the, uh, the known world. Um, in fact, St. Brendan, the voyager, it is said, discovered the New World, discovered North America um, hundreds of years before the Vikings came, which were hundreds of years before Christopher Columbus set foot. Mm. Uh, but in any case, St. Brendan, the voyager, founded countless monasteries, and he was, he was a fervent evangelizer, and that's what we want to be as well. Oh, that is a wonderful story, Father, and, and you're right. The pre-schism saints are not necessarily as well-known in orthodoxy, so thank you for, for helping to publicize that story. I didn't know it, so it's good to, good to learn new things. So, Father, um, any other, anything else you'd like to say before we wrap up today? I just want to thank Share the Faith and Father uh, Angelo uh, for... Uh, his kindness and urging me to uh, apply. And I want to thank the uh, board members of Share the Faith and especially the donors uh, that give. We appreciate very much uh, whatever assistance we can garner, and it will go to building God's kingdom. Thank you, Father. Uh, for those who would like to help Father Mark Hodges or to help Orthodox missions in the United States in general, please visit sharethefaith.net to learn more today. Thank you so much.